All right, welcome to Chapter 10, which will be on cell growth and division. And in this series of podcasts, we're going to go over cell division in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. There is some difference between those two. We are also going to revisit chromosome structure that we learned about in Chapter 12. We're then going to learn how a cell turns off and turns on uh, cell division. And, so, and also we're going to learn about when cancer occurs, which is unregulated or out of control cell growth. And then finally, we're going to learn about stem cells, which is part of the cutting edge of modern biology. All right, let's dig right into this. Okay, why are cells so small? Well, they're small for two reasons. Number one is DNA overload, which uh, some textbooks will call it like an information crisis. If a cell is too big, the ribosomes are too far away from the nucleus, and the mRNA that was made during transcription will not be able to travel through the cytoplasm fast enough to get to that ribosome and be translated. The second one is related to the first, difficulty to exchange materials. Materials are going to be able to diffuse in and out of a cell. And if a cell is really, really big, the stuff in the interior of the cell, they're not going to be able to get the nutrients diffused in, and they're certainly not going to be able to diffuse out their, their waste. All right, so these two are actually related. A big cell is going to have a hard time maintaining uh, homeostasis because it's not going to be able to move things in through and out of the cytoplasm very efficiently. All right. Now there is a mathematical way to describe what was just talked about on that previous slide and it's called the surface area to volume ratio. Now a cell requires a really really large surface area compared to its volume. You want the surface area to be six, seven, eight, nine times bigger than the volume. Now as a cell gets bigger the volume will increase at a much more rapid rate which means that ratio of surface area to volume is going to narrow. In other words, that surface area will not be five, six, seven, eight, nine times bigger. It'll only be two or three times bigger. Now, if you look on this chart, this one explains it a lot better. So, if you look over here at this small cell, if you take the surface area, which is one times one, uh, length times width, and there's actually six sides, so 1 times 1 times 6 comes out to 6 centimeters squared. That's not a very big surface area. Now over here on this very large cell, which is 3 by 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 6 is 54. So as you can see, this very large cell has a huge surface area compared to this one. You would think that's good. Now let's look at the volume, which is length times width times height. So 1 times 1 times 1 comes out to 1. And over here, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So this volume is 27 times bigger than this one. But if you compare the two, surface area to volume ratio, on the small cell, the surface area is 6 times bigger than the volume. And over here on this guy, the surface area is only 2 times bigger than the volume. This is a much better ratio. And the reason is, as a cell gets larger, the volume will increase at a much more rapid rate. I mean, look at this. Over here, you're talking at what, nine times bigger than this surface area? Over here, 27 times bigger? There's a big difference between only nine times bigger and 27 times bigger, and that's why this ratio is, is, is so, it drops so much. All right, so make sure you're aware of that. Smaller is better. You want a really, really large surface area. All right, so how big can a cell get? it can get about twice its original size. Now when it reaches twice its original size, it has two choices. All right? Choice number one is to divide and live happily ever after. Right? Now when a cell divides and it lives happily ever after, it is said to be in what is called the G0 phase. Now we're going to talk about what this really means in a later pod podcast. But just remember, what happens here is it stops dividing. It'll never go through cell division again. So it has no choice but to live happily ever after. Most of the cells in your body are going to do this. All right, the second choice is to divide. And when you divide, you're going to divide into two daughter cells. All right. Now, to do this, you got to do two steps. 
Step number one, DNA replication. Step number two is fission. All right, now there's a small mistake on here. Basically, you just need to cross this stuff out. All right, so let's go back to this daughter cell. The original cell is called a mother cell. And when it divides, it's going to divide into two daughter cells. And these will be approximately half the size of the original mother cell. Okay, so this was daughter cell one, and that is daughter cell two. All right, now why do we need to replicate the DNA? Let's say that mom over here, she's got four chromosomes. So how much do their babies need? Well, this one's going to need four chromosomes, and this is going to need four chromosomes. If we do not replicate mom's DNA, this will get two chromosomes, and that will get two. And that is not enough information to survive. These daughter cells would only be able to make half the amount of proteins that it would take to survive. So you have to go through DNA replication. And remember when you hear the words replication, you need to think of stuff like leading strand, lagging strand, Okazaki fragments, DNA helicase, DNA polymerase, DNA uh, ligase, etc. All right, now remember, fission just means to split. So in this case, the cell is just going to split in two. All right, now what is the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction? Uh, this is as simple as I can make it. Asexual reproduction, one parent. The offspring is genetically identical to the parent. That's the biggest, biggest thing right here. Basically, when you do asexual reproduction, you are producing clones, exact copies of the parent. Now, what's good about this? Easier to do. Just need one individual. Problem is, lack of genetic variety. Most multicellular creatures are going to do sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is going to require two individuals. The offspring is going to be genetically different than the parents. You were produced through genetic, or through asexual, let me back that up. You were produced through sexual reproduction, and you have half of each parent's DNA. So half of your DNA came from mom, the other half came from dad. You are a hybrid. You are not genetically the same as either parent. You are slightly different. Now, this is harder to do. It takes a lot more effort by these, organi by these organisms to do it, but the payoff is greatly increase your genetic variety. And what's really cool about genetic variety, it is the raw material for evolution, which we will talk about more when we get into chapter 15. All right, that will conclude podcast number one from chapter 10.